Hello and welcome back to another installment to Pokefodder. And in today's video, I want to talk about a new AR game that is not like anything else that I've seen on the market or have played previously. And this is going to be The Witcher Monster Slayer. Really intriguing concept here and something that I think potentially could have a really big audience. Now, The Witcher is an entire series. I guess there's other games. There's a show on Netflix. I'm not super familiar with The Witcher as, as, a, as a, a series itself. But as this game goes, currently it, it's not in beta because um, as far as I know, if something is in beta on iOS, that means that it goes through test flight. It, it's been my experience. And this is actually available in the New Zealand App Store. So if you know how to access the New Zealand App Store, you're good to go here. And I will tell you that nothing appears to be geofenced so that if you download it from the New Zealand App Store, um, it should work wherever you are. What I really like about this game, and what has me intrigued, is this is an RPG game that takes you out into the world. So if you are familiar with other RPG games, the only one that comes to mind uh, initially is gonna be like Elder Scroll, Elder Scroll Blades for the, for the iPhone. This is going to be similar, except for you actually have to go out into the world in order to complete missions instead of completing missions just from your phone. Kind of a cool concept. It, it really, my first impression is, this is going to be very similar to what I thought Harry Potter Wizards Unite was going to be until Wizards Unite wasn't. So let me give you just a little bit of detail, and then I'm going to head out into the park that's over here and kind of walk through some of the stuff so you can see it. In the game description, and I'm just gonna read this and you can follow along on the screen with you, but I think it's a good idea for you to know exactly what this is so that whenever I get out there and start working on this, you're, you're not completely caught off guard. But it says, track, study, and fight dangerous beasts which roam the world around you and see monster infested realm of the Witcher up close like never before. The Witcher Monster Slayer is an augmented reality exploration game that challenges you to become an elite monster hunter. As you explore the real world around you, each step will take you deeper into a dark fantasy adventure RPG unlike any other. And I, I actually really agree with that. The track monsters learn their habits and prepare for battle. Select the best weapons and armor and brew powerful Witcher potions to gain the upper hand before you enter combat. As you gain experience and take on more dangerous foes, you will need to improve your skills, your gear, and your tactics in order to become a better monster slayer of true renown and i will tell you before we get into it battling is extremely difficult even at the jump now remember this is brand new like this week new and i fully expect before global launch a lot of things will be changed and adjusted and tweaked so keep that in mind that my first impression here and the, the first look at this is going to be as it is week one so when it comes out in your country things could change up a little bit track your targets Use real-time weather conditions, time of day, and your Witcher senses to hunt monsters living around you. You'll see that more in a minute. Explore advanced augmented reality. Make the dark fantasy world of the Witcher your reality with AR features that encourage exploration and change your perception of places you thought you knew. On, on that note, um, the game looks extremely cool when you do use AR. You don't need to use AR. You can just use the generic backgrounds, but it does have that really cool AR element that is completely ignored, I think, in almost all AR games, unless you're just taking like photos for, for whatever reason um, of fake creatures or mystical creatures in your real world settings. Same type of situation with that. Become a Witcher. Experience deep story driven quests that propel you through epic adventure inspired by the Witcher series. Put enemies to the sword. Once you've prepared, take on gigantic console quality monsters in RPG inspired first person combat. Gather trophies from fallen foes, defeat dozens of different beasts and grow a collection worthy of a true monster slayer. Finally, step into the role of a professional monster slayer with this location based AR RPG game from Spoko, part of the CD Project family. And I hope I said that company name right. But there you go. That's kind of the general overview of what the game is. I'm going to get into the park. Um, I do want to put a little bit of a caveat 
on what's about to happen and what you're about to see here is because I'm using my old iPhone, my iPhone SE. And while yes, the game is supported, I'm just gonna warn you now that the map looks like complete garbage. It looks terrible. And from other people who are currently playing the game who have sent me screenshots of their, screenshots of their maps, mine looks horrendous compared to what theirs looks like. Theirs look like what you would expect if you are accustomed to playing like Pokemon Go, Wizards Unite, or um, Jurassic World Alive, where it has that clean look. Mine does not look that way at all, but that does not affect the, the fact that I'm using this phone. It doesn't affect any of the battle sequences or anything. All those look amazing. So I'm not sure where the disconnect is there, but just know that before the next screen that you see, um, my map is not gonna look really great. The first thing that I wanna say here is that the game crashes a lot. And by what I mean a lot is probably every 10 minutes at least it crashes. Again, this is the very first one. Like this is brand, brand new and it's not meant for global launch. And I very well could have a phone that it's just barely capable of running this game. So keep all that in mind. But the first thing, like I said, that you'll notice is the graphics, the, the map looks terrible. Um, it doesn't look good, but let's get over that already. So what you're gonna see is on your map, there are different monsters that you're going to battle. We're gonna go through everything. The first thing in the upper left-hand corner is gonna be the weather. As it mentioned earlier, the time of day and the weather are going to affect what monsters spawn in the wild. And that is gonna be useful at some point. Staying on the right hand, left hand side over here, um, you will see what's your witcher's eye, I believe is what this is called. And you're gonna tap on this and it's gonna show you kind of everything that's going on around you. Now, some things to take note here is the red are monsters. Those red things, I believe the gray things are going to be like ingredients to craft different toxins or elixirs, whatever. Um, and I believe those are gonna be the gray ones, but the red ones are the monsters around you. These trees are going to be um, like bosses. They're gonna be hideouts and they're very hard. I haven't even attempted one, but they're, they're extremely difficult. They have a couple minions, I think, that are guarding it, but then you can place bait inside of this and we'll get into that a little bit more. But those are gonna kinda be you know, I don't wanna say they're POIs because there really are no POIs on the game. It's kind of a fluid map. And as you can see, this Nameton is um, is gonna be disappearing in 15 hours from when I'm recording this. And then you see the guardians, like there's different guardians. This one's a golem and this one's a cockatrice. <laughs> I hope I'm saying that right. So there's that. Now the other thing, and I'm gonna skip over something real quick, but you can go to filters and you can see what type of creatures are around you. So if you're looking for the legendary ones, and these aren't all legendary, um, I'm not sure if this works all the time or not, because sometimes I've made it work and sometimes it just hasn't really worked out for me. But you can actually look to see which monsters are around you as far as rarity. And then this Falcon potion here, that's gonna show everything up around you. And I'm, I'm kind of feel like, and I'll just use one here, um, because it's, it's kind of wasteful because I'm not actually gonna use it, but I'm going to use the Falcon Potion. And I think that's how these filters end up working out. If not, I'll put a, a screenshot that I did there. So now you can see, and it did work out. So you can see all the common creatures, monsters that are around me. And then we will look for rares that are around me and they'll show up there. And then you can show legendaries. Um, no legendaries around me. Really cool feature to help you kind of focus on exactly what it is that you are hunting for here on your Witcher's eye screen. To get back out of this, you're going to tap on the Witcher's eye screen and then that's gonna go away and you're back to the map again. In the middle here on the bottom, the up arrow, this is gonna be where your menu is, your settings, your practice for practice battling, your character. So if you want to upgrade your sword, if you are trying to upgrade your armor, this is where you're going to find that. I'm not sure what trinkets are, but uh, there's six of them and I have none. If we go on, you have your journal. This is where your quests are, your completed quest, and then new quests that you get. I currently have finished everything that I have and I can't 
find a new one on the map just yet. But these are really cool because they're actually animated. I'll get into these. As soon as I find another quest to do, I'll do a video on the quest. And then you have your glossary. And these are the two other characters that I've come into contact with in the game. And there's a lot more information. If you tap on them, it'll tell you more about them. And then you can view them in AR. So if I wanted to put any of these creatures out here in the grass, of the park where I am, then that's where you would do that. Next in the middle, I think this is a besetary. I'm not familiar with this particular word, but this is where all of the different beasts start. All the different monsters are gonna be housed. So you see there are 37 common creatures at launch for the game, a bunch of them that I haven't discovered yet. There are 25 rare creatures and then 16 legendary creatures. Now of note here, Something that I'm not going to go into a lot of detail on, but I just want to bring your attention to is if you look at the Alp over here on the right, it says one of three. Well, that means that I've defeated one and I have to defeat three in order for it to go to the next level. The next level, if you look at the right Wraith right here, it says zero of 50 because I've already encountered and defeated three of those. After you do that, you're going to get... I don't even know what they're called. We'll find out here in a second, but you're going to get an item that's going to help you with your skill tree with that. And then you're going to have to do 50 in order to get another item for your skill tree. Moving on, you have your skills, which is your skill tree. You see that there are three different skill trees that you can work on and they're points is what I was talking to, where if you defeat the three creatures, the three monsters, you're going to get a, a point and those points are what you use for the skill tree. You have your combat, your alchemy, and then your signs, skill trees, and then everything is gonna kind of tell you your fast attack. Allows you to perform fast attacks. You have your strong attacks, and then you have your parry. So these are all gonna be the different ways that you can fill them out. And because I have five available points, I can allocate those out to any of these. You have your alchemy, which has three different three different paths that you can take. And then your signs, you just have the one path, your Igni sign, I, I'm, I hope I'm saying that right. Uh, as I said, I'm not familiar with the Witcher series, so, you know, maybe I'm saying that wrong. But you have your skill tree here, and as you can see, it, it's not real big, it's not real deep, but it gets expensive in a hurry because some of these down here are like, unlocks at 25, unlocks at 30, and then, you know, like, I have five and I'm not gonna progress very far. So that's gonna be how you choose to level up. That's the RPG portion of the game. And then you have your shop where you're gonna have all your different bundles. It uses coins. You can buy all these different things. I have no idea. This is in New Zealand dollars. I think New Zealand has dollars. I know Australia has dollars. I don't know what the Kiwis monetary is. So I have no idea what these that actually cost in US dollars. But as you can see, uh, the, there's a daily deal that's going to reset every day. And then you have regular deals that are always available. And then startup bundles, which are special little bundles. So that is basically, and then you have your compass. So that is basically everything on the home screen that you're seeing here. And I know it doesn't look all that amazing, but you have different monsters. The little skull above this monster, I believe, means that this is going to be a medium threat level. If it even loads, fingers crossed, maybe, maybe not. And as you can see, like on this old phone, it is absolutely sucking the life out of my battery. I think I started today at like 91% battery. And just in the time that I've been recording here, I'm already down 30% of my battery. And I can tell you that the back of my phone is getting pretty significant as far as heat goes. Just as I suspected, this, the one skull above my enemy did in fact indicate that it was a medium threat level. What you're gonna see on the screen before you actually go into fight is you're gonna see what it is that you're battling, the difficulty, what it is vulnerable to. So you're gonna kinda have to learn if that means strong attack or quick attack, and then there's a fire, or you could have a different like spell or spell cast that is gonna work, that it's, uh, that it's um, vulnerable to. You swords, it'll probably tell you the different types of swords. I only have the beginner sword, so that's my only option. Potions, you have three slots, naturally. I haven't unlocked just a whole lot here, but there is an option here where you can put the different type of potions, the damage increased by your sword, or regenerates vitality during combat. So you can see, once you get multiples of these unlocked, that they're going to be extremely useful. You can have bombs that you'll learn about in the training. It's just gonna throw kinetic damage. And so some of them 
Some of these enemies are vulnerable to fire. Some of them are vulnerable to kinetic damage. And then you have oil, which is just gonna be an oil for your sword to help it do more damage. Currently, all I've ever done is just hit the auto and let it do its thing. And then you hit fight to trigger the fight. I'll show you how battles go not here. I'll do it in the practice screen just because I can go slower and don't have to worry about getting knocked out. Like I said, even at the very beginning levels, the easy monsters are actually pretty difficult to knock out. A couple of quick things that I want to touch on before I end this just brief overview video on the game is missions and battling. Like I mentioned before, if you go to your journal, you can see the very first mission you're gonna start off with is the final exam. You're not gonna be able to avoid that one. The next is going to be your winged bandit and you're gonna actually have to go onto the map somewhere to find that. Now what I have found is where you see the tree on this witcher's eye map, in order to start your quest, there's going to be like a yellow question mark or a yellow exclamation mark. That's where you're gonna go on your map in order to find your quest. Once you begin the quest, you're going to, it's gonna lead you to where you need to go next. And then you're just gonna to continue to follow the storyline. I finished everything that I could and I'm not sure where my next storyline begins. And a bit of caution here is wherever you begin your story, that's where you're gonna to have to finish your story as well. So make sure you're not like on vacation and you begin a new story because if you leave the next day from your vacation or if you leave your vacation without finishing your story, as far as I know, um, you're probably never gonna be able to complete that. Um, again, this is all just like very preliminary information that I have on this, but I do know wherever you begin your mission, that's where you're gonna to have to complete your mission. So keep that in mind if you choose to decide to play the game a little bit early. And so as you progress through, like I said, it'll guide you to where you're supposed to go to complete the next part of your mission. You will get another mission and then another mission up until the point where I'm at now where I just don't know. I probably have to do more battling or something in order to unlock further missions. But at the moment, this is where I'm done. And the last thing that I wanna talk about is going to be battles. I'm gonna do a practice battle and I highly, highly, highly encourage you to do several of these until you get down exactly how it is you're supposed to work the battle mechanics before you get out there and into the wild and start trying to slay some monsters. Because I will tell you, it is, um, it, there's, there's a steep learning curve for how to do this. Now, when you're in the practice mode here, you can do practice AR, or you can just do regular practice and it'll show you. I mean, you can see the cartoon figure or the, I don't even know what that is, but the finger will show you exactly how to do the different traces. Even with this on there, you're still gonna wanna practice a little bit. As you can see, for this very first level, and there are three levels to the practice round, you're going to have to perform 10 fast attacks and perform two critical hits. Briefly going over this, on the left here is your stamina. When that gets depleted, the battle is over. You, know, you don't die or anything, I think you faint or you just get knocked out, but the battle is over, the monster flees. You will get credit for an encounter, but you won't get credit for taking it out, and then you just continue to move on about your day. Over on the far left, you can see there's a yellow portion, I don't know if you can see it, but it says fast, and then a white portion that says strong, and then a moving indicator that'll tell you if your attack was fast or if it was strong. Additionally, above your foe is going to be two bars. One of them is grayed out, one of them is red. The red one is going to be your foe's stamina. The one above that is going to be the charge for your special move, whether it's the, the fire or I don't, I don't even know how, what it's called, but that's your charge move basically. So as you can see, we are practicing fast moves here. And as you can tell by the little thing that goes around, keep swiping quickly to perform fast attacks. So that's exactly what we're gonna do. And you can see my attack charging up there that was your critical hit. Now I probably could have let that go a little bit faster so that you could see it. But you see on the left hand or right hand side how I was doing quick attacks so my moving meter was staying in the quick attack side. It's just con like changing up, doing as quick as you can. Now this critical thing when you're in battle is not gonna move this slow. They're just giving you an idea of what it looks like. It'll actually come down the screen a lot faster. This is your critical attack. Once it's charged up from the top bar there that was yellow, that is when you were able to use that. Moving on to the second type of attacks, these are going to be your strong attacks. You're gonna to wanna to spend a little more time 
drawing your finger across your screen in order to do a strong attack. Everything else about it, the battle sequence is exactly the same. So as you can see, we're going a little bit slower here. There comes my critical hit and I'm not there. See, there we go. And then it charges up, we knock out our opponent. The third and final thing is going to be parry attacks. And these are gonna be how you block. So what you're gonna do, and those are signs, I guess, is this one down here that's new on the bottom right. It's gonna be your signs. On the bottom left, you'll see your bombs. So the parry attacks, basically, you're just gonna press and hold the screen when they're about to attack, and that's gonna deflect some of the damage that you receive. Now, you're still gonna receive quite a bit of damage. I haven't found, I haven't been able to test how much reduction there is, but on some of the foes, it still goes down quite a bit. So keep that in mind. So that's all you have to do is just press and hold. That's how you dodge attacks or parry them. Other than that, uh, throw bombs. In order to throw a bomb, you just click on your bomb and then throw it. So far, I haven't found a way to mess with that. <laughs> and since I'm trying to throw two bombs, there it goes. And then to cast a sign, you're gonna press it and then the battle sequence is gonna stop and you do have a time limit. You can see the bar going across. You do have a time limit for when you can cast a sign. There is a delay before it recharges. Once it recharges, again, you can see, you do the V shape for this particular one, boom, victory against the AI. So there you go, your first look at the Witcher Monster Slayer, the new AR game that is really an RPG game. Um, I, I've, I'm enjoying it, uh, I'm still learning about it, but it has a lot of elements that I think are extremely cool. This is not just another like Pokemon Go, this is not just like another Harry Potter Wizards Unite. It's a, it's a little bit of a mix of a whole bunch of different AR games. I didn't really ever play The Walking Dead R World, but a lot of people that are playing this say it has a lot of those elements to it. I do like that there's an RPG element to this game. I think that's really cool. The world is actually your map. I do have two things that are of a bit of a concern for me just initially, and that is gonna be your the circle that's around you from the different screens. Um, it appears it's probably about 50 meters. I don't know what that is in feet, but it's about 50 meters if I'm judging it based on like Jurassic World Alive. And in order to interact with anything, it has to be inside of that circle. That seems kind of limited. Um, I know a lot of games have kind of expanded that region, but it appears to be about 50 meters. The other thing is, um, I guess there's three things of concern. The, the other one that I've already mentioned is if you start a quest, you have to go back to that location in order to complete the quest, which could be problematic, say, if you start a quest at college or at your grandma's house or at a friend's house or just not at home. And then for some reason you leave without completing the quest, you're going to have to go back to that location in order to complete the quest. Um, I can see that being extremely problematic, like I used in the example earlier, where if you're on vacation, you start a quest but aren't able to finish it. Um, could be could be problems. And then the other thing is, there's just really nothing that you can do at home. There's the one thing that I really like about Jurassic World Live is you have to go out in the world in order to collect DNA. Same with Pokemon Go, you have to go out into the world to collect candies or to find better IV uh, Pokemon. But then there's something that you can do at home and that is gonna be the PVP element of the game. With this, there's nothing that I have found unless something spawns at your house that you can do in the game. It is entirely, you have to go out into the world around you in order to do anything. With COVID, a lot of places still being on pretty heavy lockdown, which may be why they haven't released this game globally yet. Um, that could be pretty problematic and could end up driving people away from the game if like this weekend here in Southern California, it's supposed to be 109, 110, 111, 115. I'm not going outside during those two days. So it kind of means that for a couple days, I'll just be putting the game to the side because there's just nothing I could do. I don't know what they could add to make it better, but um, those are kind of just my initial thoughts on things that I see that could be problematic. Anyway, this video is running a lot longer than I thought it would. Maybe I'll edit it down to uh, 
to, to shorten this up a little bit. But overall, I think it's an extremely cool concept. I'm excited to see where this game goes. And like I said, it just completely is draining the battery on my old, it is an old, old phone, but I'm already down to 37%. So keep that in mind as well. Let me know down in the comments below, what do you think? Is this a game that you can see yourself getting behind? Or are you just kind of played out on the AR games? You want something um, where you can be at home during COVID-19 and just do your thing while under social distancing. And if you would like to test the game out for yourself, wherever it is that you are, um, you can Google how to change your store location. I'm not gonna put the link out there. It's a pretty easy Google, so make sure you do that. It is available on iOS only, so if you are looking for Android or Google Play for an APK file, none exist, so keep that in mind. Um, I do know that it doesn't work on all iPads. Um, I'll take a screenshot and post it up somewhere here of which devices this game currently works on. Anyway, that's all I've got for this one. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and until next time.